We do want to welcome in South Carolina Congresswoman now, Nancy Mace. Congresswoman, thank you for your time. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Should Norfolk Southern be held liable, and what do you want to see from them to right their wrong in East Palestine? Anyone who contributed to this massive environmental disaster in Ohio, starting with the CEO of Norfolk Southern, should be held up to account for this epic disaster. I also would like to hear more from the governor and also from our own Department of Transportation on how long this mess is going to take to get cleaned up. And we know Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw spoke on Capitol Hill this week. Um, let's hear just a snippet of what he said. I want to begin today by expressing how deeply sorry I am for the impact this derailment has had on the residents of East Palestine and the surrounding communities. Norfolk Southern will clean the site safely, thoroughly, and with urgency. You have my personal commitment. Yeah, so Shaw, they're apologizing, making commitments, vowing to help rebuild East Palestine. He has declined to commit to paying long-term health costs for impacted residents there. Is that right? It doesn't sound like it, especially when they're the ones that told the governor that they would uh, take care of the hazardous materials and would not uh, harm the community. And then what happened? The exact opposite happened. And this sounds like it's a day late, dollar short. The only reason the CEO spoke up this soon was because he was called before the United States Senate over 30 days. What, 30 days after uh, this thing, this disaster happened? It's wrong. How do officials at each level hold him to the promises that he did try to make there? Well, having hearings and an investigation is the first start. Um, you know, through the infrastructure funding and the infrastructure package, any kind of money that Norfolk Southern might be looking for ought to be tied to tangible results like the safekeeping and cleanup of the hazardous waste in East Palestine, Ohio. That would be a start. And we know under current regulations, Norfolk Southern was not required to disclose the amount of hazardous material that was on that particular train. What changes are needed now to strengthen rail safety and to prevent another disaster like this from happening again? That's right. 20 of the 150 cars on that derailment had hazardous materials. A full disclosure, having a regulation, creating a regulation that would require that disclosure would be a good start. But I got to tell you, um, our infrastructure is crumbling. There are over a thousand derailments on U.S. railroads in the last year alone. I would like to know where the two trillion dollars of the uh, infrastructure package that was passed last year, where the 66 billion of that for rail, where is that going and how is that going to improve our crumbling railroads across the country? And, and meanwhile, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg has called for increasing the maximum fine for railroad safety violations in the wake of the derailment. Is that enough? Well, I think we have to look at the regulations and safety standards as well. I think that would be a good next step and also investigate how this happened. I mean, we had over a thousand derailments last year in the United States alone. And you look at other countries uh, that make greater investments in their infrastructure, they don't have as many problems as we do with derailments. And so I, I think we've got to figure out where the money's going and who, or, you know, why isn't it being spent more expeditiously, more efficiently for safety standards to ensure this doesn't happen in the future.